Hallelujah. Bobby, it ain't Mother Bobby, Elder Bobby, <laughs> Mother Bobby, <laughs> praise God, though she is a mother in the natural, she ain't that old, amen, praise God, I'm in a joyous mood this morning, y'all, y'all forgive me, I, if I'm a little silly this morning, y'all forgive me, um, I'm just in a, uh, the joy of the Lord is my strength, I'm kind of excited today, um, it's amazing, and I guess, I guess, you know, if you can't wake up to the day and be excited about the day, then maybe you need to go back and check yourself with the Lord. Um, but I'm excited about today. Even in the midst of trial and testing, I'm excited. Um, and that's partly because of this word I want to deal with today. Uh, we talked about establish yesterday, and we're going to continue in that vein to a certain extent. Um, but man, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to. Man, get into some word today, and I'm, I'm super excited. Wow, man, let, let me calm my spirit so I don't make a mess in my broadcast this morning. But thank God for you being uh, with us this morning to our Impact family, our Kingdom Agenda Fellowship friends, to the kingdom at large. Welcome to Inspire AM. We're certainly excited that you've taken the time to be with us this morning and to sacrifice. Bless you, bro. Uh, bless you to, to everyone who's on the line, man. We're so glad to see you. Now, listen. You know, we've been talking about this season of rest and unrest, rest and unrest. And, and, and one of the things I've been trying to, to get as an overarching theme is that you have to put your confidence, your trust in the Lord. Um, in this season, you're being tested on where your confidence lies. Do you trust God for everything in your life? Can you have that stable life of trusting the Father? And yesterday... We began to talk about this word established, established, and, and what, we, what we were talking about here in our confidence on this word established was that, listen, that God wants to lay a solid foundation in your life. Mm. He wants to lay a solid foundation in your life. So we began to talk about this word um, established, and, and, um, and it comes from the Greek word stay rizzo, stay rizzo, stay rizzo, stay rizzo. And it means to make stable or to make firm or to set fast or to fix, um, to be strengthened or to be, or to be uh, constant and confirmed in your mind. Remember, one thing that I like to remind you of every, every, ever so often is your, your thoughts and, and your actions work together. The way you think is going to govern how you act. And so in this season where you're being tested and things are coming at you and, 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 and different things are happening, your stability is being tested. Your, your faith in God is being, being tried. It, it's being measured in this season. And what you've got to understand, watch this. And oh, let me ask you, please like and share the video. Yeah, please like and share the video. Um, I'd appreciate it if you do that. Um, um, but watch this. Um, that 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 confidence in God, that 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 trust in God to establish you, trust in God to to make you firm. I want to um, pull us back to James, James, the fifth chapter. Remember, we looked at verse eight. 
James 5 and 8. Thank you, James 5 and 8. It says, be ye also patient. Be patient. Listen, don't, don't be, don't, don't, don't be so hasty. What it means, watch this, this patience right here, watch this, means to not lose heart. To not lose heart. Now watch this. I want to deal with this for a minute. It says be of a long spirit. To not lose heart. To be able to deal with long suffering. Be, be able to deal with, watch this, bearing offenses and injuries. You've got to understand to be patient. Watch this, in bearing the offenses and injuries of others. In other words, you got to realize that other people are in a process just like you. So watch this. Even your haters, the folks that rail against you, the liars that lie to you, the cheaters that cheat on you, the, 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 the offenders that offend you are still in a process. And you've got to watch this. Learn how to be patient with offenses. Watch this. Matthew, Matthew 24 says, that because of many offenses, the love of many will wax cold. And there is nothing like, watch this, a callous, jaded believer. There's nothing like a heart that was once full of love that is now turned bitter. Here's one of my more isms. Here's one of my more isms. Watch this. People who love deeply can also hate deeply after being wounded. The level of passion that people have in love can be met with the same level of passion in hate because the heart's capability after being wounded must be to recover and not stay in that place. I'm telling you, if you've never been hurt, you wouldn't understand this. But because you have been injured or hurt before or offenses have come, you've got to learn how to work your way out of that offended place by loving again and loving again. And watch this, even at times asking Christ to love through you because your human capability is limited. Hallelujah. So when he says here, James says, I want you to be patient. I want you to be patient. Be long suffering. Listen, learn how to endure offenses. Learn how to endure injuries. Watch this and establish your hearts. He says, get your heart solid. So watch this. When we talk about this word patient, watch this. It says to be of a long spirit and not to lose heart. So watch this. Let me challenge you on this, that your heart and your spirit can have varying degrees of confidence. Your heart and your spirit can have varying degrees of trust. Oh God. Your heart and your spirit can have varying depths of pain and injury. Listen, the Bible says there's nothing like the wounds of a friend. Oh God. It's something different when a friend injures you than when an enemy injures you. Watch this. The injuries by people that you love can run much deeper than the injuries of an enemy. Because watch this. You don't get mad when haters who hate you hate. You get mad when folks who love you hate. Because they're the folks that you trusted with your emotions. They're the folks that you trusted with your confidence. They're the folks that you trusted with faith. So watch this. Watch this. I want I want I want to talk about a word today. Your established, being established. See, being established means you got to have confidence. Mm. You got to have confidence in who your father is and who your father is. And you got to learn how to trust God for what God said. Ah. Jesus. You got to learn how to trust God for what he said and know that his promises are yea and amen. Watch this. Mm -mm. Let's go to first Corinthians. I mean, sorry, second Corinthians. Let's go back to second Corinthians, the first chapter, second Corinthians 1, 15 through 24. Let me rush to a close on this. Second Corinthians, second Corinthians, the first chapter, 15 through 24. Watch this. Verse 15, 2 Corinthians 1, 15 through 24. And in this confidence, I was minded to come to you before 
that ye might have a second benefit. Watch this. So Paul is saying, watch this. You benefited once. I want you to benefit again. Every, listen, listen. Everybody say again in your spirit. Everybody say again in your spirit. He says, I want you to have a second benefit. I don't want you just to benefit from this one time, but I want you to benefit from this a second time. Watch this. So what is this confidence that Paul is talking about? What is this confidence that he's talking about? Watch this. Watch this. You got to understand this. Oh, God. He says, I don't want you to miss out on anything. I want you to have benefit for a second time. So watch this. As I said, you got to learn how to bounce back after things happen. You got to learn how to have your confidence in Christ. Now watch this. I want to bounce back for a second and deal with the first time. Oh, Jesus. Can I deal with the first time for a minute? So let me read this very quickly so we can understand context. Watch this. First Corinthians, the first chapter, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, you are who you are by the will of God. Don't deny who you are. And Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God, which is that Corinth, and all the saints which are in Achaia. He says, grace and peace be unto you from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now watch this. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the Father of all comfort. Now remember these key words, mercies and comfort. <clears throat> now watch this. In verse 4, he says, who comforteth us in all tribulation that ye may be able to comfort them which are in trouble by the comfort wherewith ye also are comforted of God. So watch this. Let me give you this point very, very quickly. Your troubles, God uses them to establish you in this concept of comfort so that you can become a comforter. See, you got to understand, a lot of what happens to you is not for you. A lot of what happens to you it's for those you have to touch. A lot of what happens to you is development of ministry through you. You've got to understand some of your problems ain't even your problems. Some of your problems are your development for the problems of others. You've got to see this. And if you don't learn how to handle the offenses, you'll get stuck focused in the problem instead of seeing the developmental characteristics that come out of you having gone through that season, that situation, that, that spitefulness, whatever happened to you, you'll miss that that was development for somebody else. Can you comfort others with the same comfort that God has comforted you with? You got to see this. He says a second time, I want you to have your second benefit. Watch this. Watch, let me keep moving. God, he says, for the sufferings of Christ abound in us. Mm. The sufferings of Christ abound in us. Watch this. So that our consolation aboundeth by Christ. So watch this. He says, everything we're going through is being used by the anointing to minister to you, O Corinth. So watch this. Can God use you as a conduit for Christ? Can he allow you to go through some things so that some ministry can come through you? Ah, this is your confidence. You got to keep your confidence in Christ. Mm. Watch this. Verse, 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 verse six. And whether ye, whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation. It, it is for your comfort. It is for you to be, uh, 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 to, for, for us to be trained to come alongside you and help you and bring you through situations. Watch this, which is effectual in, in the, in the enduring of the same sufferings, which we also suffer. So watch this. Watch this. Let me, let me talk to spiritual leaders for a moment. The things you have to go to, go through rather, the things that you have to go through are set for the people you have to go to. The things you have to go through, the tests, the trials, the enduring afflictions, you have to go through those things because the people you have to go minister to are going to be in that same state and you've got to be prepared to pour into them. So today's affliction in your life is tomorrow's victory in the people you minister to's life. 
Hear me again. Today's affliction in your life is tomorrow's victory in the people you have to minister to whose life. Your life is feeding the life of Christ. Come on, somebody. You got to understand God wants to establish you. He wants to get you solid so that what you present to others is solid. Help me, Jesus. He doesn't want you to be double-minded. He wants you to know that he can be a balm in Gilead. That's why he lets a little sickness come to you. Even when the crowd cries, but just in heal thyself. See, you got to understand this. You got to understand this. The proverb, it was a proverb that Jesus meant along the time when he was doing ministry. And the people cried, physician, heal thyself. In other words, you out here doing all this good work, but you can't handle your own stuff. See, that's, listen, you got to be careful of spirits of accusation that are always at you and always trying to deter you. You got to know that what you're going through is going to be coming out through you. It's going to be used by God. Hallelujah. Mm. Oh, God, I got to hurry up. I got to hurry up. Let me drop. Oh, God, I can't even get to all of what I need to share to you to share with you today. Watch this. Mm. Oh, Jesus. You got to read the first context of this. I can't even get to all of it. I can't even get to this, but I want to get I got to deal with this second benefit because what you what you got to understand. Watch this is that God is watch this is. Mm. Oh, Jesus, I, I'm, I'm all, I feel almost trapped in what I want to say to you today oh, by the Holy Spirit. Listen, listen, you have to understand God is building a foundation in you so that he can build ministry through you. He says, I want you to have this second benefit. He says, I want you to understand. I'm coming to you and I'm saying this to you again. I want you to get this again. Now watch this. Mm. Read the context of 1 through 14. You got to get that. I don't have time to do it all because my time is limited. I got nine minutes and I got to get out of here. Watch this. In verse first, verse 15, he says, I, 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 I have... And in this confidence, this confidence, he says, in this trust, in this reliance. So he says, watch this. I'm relying on a process by which God is developing some things in us that he, that he can bring forth some godly sincerity. He can bring forth the testimony of conscience. See, see, some folk can't even deal with their own conscience. But Paul said in ministry, you got to deal with your conscience, the testimony of our, of our conscience. You got to understand that watch this, that watch this that you got to be confident in what God is 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 doing in you and so your your confidence levels can vary and you got to understand when your confidence is low get to the word watch this remember the former things and trust God again you got to trust God again ah God you we mm. Paul said it like this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, Jesus. I feel, uh. In verse 8, he says, For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia. We were pressed out of measure, above strength, in so much that we despaired even of life. He says, It was so hard. That it was beyond us to care for ourselves. It was beyond us to win the victory. It was beyond us. It was beyond our strength. So watch this. I want to break right now this lie that we repeat so much in the church. Here it is. Here it is. The Lord won't put no more on you than you can bear. That ain't true. Where you get that from? You don't see that nowhere in scripture. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that the Lord, watch this, will not let you endure any temptation whereby he doesn't provide a way of escape. Listen, you cannot bear it. The weight is too heavy. If you could bear it, you wouldn't need the Father. Your confidence has to be in him, not in you. Your confidence has to be in him to work some things out and bring it to righteousness. Not you. You ain't that good. You're not that strong. Left to yourself, you lose your mind. It's him that's keeping you. It is he that keepeth Israel that never sleeps and never slumbers. Your God is not sleep on your case. He's letting you mature 
in your circumstance because he wants to do something through you. And unless he allows some things to happen to you, he can't get you ready to go to others. Your confidence has to be in him. Paul said we despaired of life. We had a death sentence in us. But God brought us through. So our confidence is in God. So when you feel the foundation feeling shaky, who do you turn to? You got to turn back and put your confidence back in God. Oh, Jesus. He says, I have my confidence and I was minded to come to you. To come to you. So everything I've been through, everything I've been through is for who I've got to go to. You got to know that people of God. Listen, mothers, you've gone through certain experiences in life because you've got to minister to your children. Fathers, you've gone through certain things in life because you've got to minister to your children. Mothers of the church, elders of the church, preachers, pastors, apostles, you've gone through some things because you've got to minister to those you're sent to. Friends, you've gone through some things because you got to be the bestie to another friend that's got to go through what you've been through. You got to get up out of the misery, misery with them and do some ministry with them. There's a reason why you've been through. Ah, uh, watch, watch this, watch this. Your pain is purposeful. Your attacks are anointed. You, you got to understand this. This is for God's purpose. My God, I feel like I'm spinning my wheels this morning. I can't make no progress in this thing. Watch this. Watch this. Ah, oh, Jesus. Paul says, Paul says, verse 16, and the past, no, let me skip, 17. When I therefore was thus minded, did I use lightness? He says, I didn't come to you lightly. When I had confidence, I came to you boldly. And see, sometimes people don't understand boldness, but I, but when you have confidence in God, You'll be bold about some things. The disciples even pray, Lord, give us boldness to preach this gospel. Listen, I don't care who you are. I'm not backing down off of this gospel. You can be, you can be a Jehovah's Witness. You can be whatever. You can be Black Hebrew Israelite. You can be Nation of Islam. You can be whoever you want to be. My confidence is in this gospel. This gospel of Jesus Christ. This belief in Yeshua HaMashiach. We got to learn, church, in this next decade to stand on his word our confidence is in him we shall not waver church we are the church of the living God we have the promises of God we are the elect we are the beloved we will stand the very gates of hell shall not prevail against us I'm confident in that and I won't back up I won't back up off of that we're God's elect we are God's chosen we've been purchased by the blood Oh, I feel like preaching this morning. Ah, Jesus. He says, or the things that I purpose, do I purpose according to the flesh? That with me, there should be yay, yay, and nay, nay. But God is true. Watch this. Now, you got to understand. Watch this. Let me give you this phrase mm, to hold on to as you move ahead. But as God is true, God is true. He's not a liar. In him there's no wavering. His yea is yea and his amen is amen. He says, but as God is true, our word toward you was not yea and yea and nay. But the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me, Silvanus and Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. Watch this, and here you are. For all the promises of God in Christ, in him are yea. And in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Now he which establishes us with you is Christ and hath anointed us in God. He says, watch this. All the promises God has made for you are fulfilled in Christ. Keep your confidence in Christ. Listen, know this. Everyone around you is in the same process as you. Listen, let me remember. Come on, y'all. We're all recipients of mercy. We're all recipients of grace. 
We're all trying to work out our own soul salvation. Yes, listen, yes, they're going to mess up sometimes. Yes, they're going to fail sometimes. But he says, you be patient in loving them. Be patient. So you got to set your confidence in God that he knows what he's doing. Well, he knows what he's doing in your life. He knows the set people, the set place, and the set time. God wants to establish you. He doesn't want you wavering, but you got to watch this. You've got to stand in faith. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, and this man should expect to receive nothing of the Lord. Set your mind to be confident in Christ. That the work he's doing in you, he's going to produce a work through you. Now, 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 that was totally not what I was going to teach this morning, but that's what the Lord gave us. So I bless God for it. Come on, Mother Ma, pray. This is our last session for the week, but come on, Mother Ma, pray. Thank you, Lord God. Father God, we come to you this morning. Thank you and pray to you. Glory to God to be able to hear the teaching of your word. Glory to God. We are blessed people. Lord God, we are called to make a difference. We are, we are sending your word to us. Giving us the understanding how to apply it to our lives, and to we thank you for the anointing you put on us. We thank you for revelation of knowledge, Father God. We thank you for the ears we have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us through the teaching of your word. We are blessed people, and Father God, when we read your word, you said we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Glory to God. We are called to make a difference. You've called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. To, to show light in this dark world. We are blessed people to be called by you. You have willed it so over 2,000 years ago that we would be here hearing your word being taught to us. I thank you and I pray you for the gifts of the body that we have come together. We have heard the teaching of your word. Glory to God, we thank you for the anointing that you put upon us, your word that you put in us, and that we meditate on the word and continue to study the word. Hallelujah. Be a light in the darkened place. And men and women will see how good it works, but they'll glorify you. It's all about yes, changing the word. So I thank yes, you this God. morning. I lift you up. I bless you. I bless you this morning. Glory to God. For being the God of the universe. I thank you for salvation. Listen to our Facebook family. We love you. Listen, join us tomorrow night for um, our Inspire PM session with Pastor Leslie Timmons. He's going to be on tomorrow night sharing a dynamic word with you. My God, love the ministry that's coming out of my son right now. Listen, and uh, and let's join uh, Friday morning for Fresh Fire Friday with Bishop Anthony Terrell Petway, such a revelational teacher. Man, I love this teaching circuit that's going on right now. Tune in. Let's catch these other brothers. I promise you there'll be a word of revelation for you. Until then, be lifted, be, 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 be encouraged, and let's go manifest. Be blessed.